So we are reading verse 55. Yeah. O Manojna Hridaye, girl with a beautiful heart. O Sadaye, merciful girl. Will that beautiful, blessed day come when this maid servant of yours will massage your feet and Shirupa Manjari takes care of your hands? You can read one more time. <laughs> O Manojna Hridaye, girl with a beautiful heart. O Sadaye, merciful girl. Will that beautiful, blessed day come when this maid servant of yours will massage your feet and Shirupa Manjari takes care of your hands. Shiragunatasa is agitated by feelings of love and separation. He is deeply absorbed in his Svarupavesha and has no other aim than Swaminiji's lotus feet. In Vraja Vilasa Stava, he says, My heart is very agitated by remembering even a drop of the sweet, divine nectar ocean that is the Yoga Lakishor. The Acharyas are our example. Our lives should be completely in allegiance to them. It is the nature of greed that it will not let a person in peace until he has gotten the object of his desire. <clears throat> this means that when we think of something for a moment and the mind is drawn to something else, the next moment, we cannot really speak of genuine greed. When the practicing devotee performs bhajan in allegiance to the acharyas, a tiny drop of their vast devotional Greed may become infused in his heart. Radhe, Radhe. So we can stop here a little bit because most important instruction is given here by Anantadas Babaji and to have a greed. Greed for devotional service, greed for Ishtadev, greed for own Swarup, real spiritual identity, and greed for spiritual relationship. So this greed, transcendental greed, 
is the essence of all devotional practices. This is the way and this is the goal in why we, uh, this is the way which brings to the goal, sorry. But when devotee attained the goal of his greed, he is becoming more greedy. Because this is the nature of Shimata Radharani, to make devotee more greedy. And the feelings which appears in Raghunath here are very strong agitations. Because his love is so intense and doesn't allow him to be peaceful. Nature of love is to always agitate lover and beloved. This is the nature of love. Even in materialistic love, we can see the similar symptoms. But what to speak about original love, transcendental love, how much agitation is present in the heart of devotee, and also how much agitation is present in Shiradika to be with her maidservants. And how much agitation is present in the heart of devotee in Manjari to be with other Manjaris. So there is no peace, no shanti in devotional service. It's always waves of different emotions which are coming and going and coming even more stronger than before, and going, and again coming, and clashing. So it brings agitation. This is the nature of prema. And devotee who is on that level, he always feels these strong waves of agitation, because he wants to be in direct service, direct association, which And here we can see it's not that Tulsi Manjari wants to be only with Shivaradika. He wants to be with Rupa Manjari to share the service, to depend on her mercy. This is great greedness and agitation in the heart of Raghunath. Because she, like Tulasi, wants to serve together with Guru Manjari this beautiful Manogya Hridaye, Radhika, who is girl with the most beautiful heart. So it's normal completely normal for devotee to have strong agitation, to be closed, intimate, and serve such kind of girl who has most beautiful heart. Radhika's heart is most beautiful heart because she is the embodiment of love. and most intense embodiment of love, Mahababa, Madanakya Mahababa. So her heart is actually a real temple of love. Premandir. Real temple of love is Radhika's heart. And this is the source of all love, which is present in material worlds also and also in spiritual worlds. And because of that love, all these words are existing. We simply cannot imagine that any kind of world, spiritual even, and material can exist without love. 
for someone who cannot accept the love and all pervading nature of love, he is interesting in impersonal, transcendental light of Brahman. But this is not the goal, especially ultimate goal, of those who want to know embodiment of all existence which appears in the form of Shimatara She is the temple of love, and everyone is searching for this kind of love, knowingly or unknowingly. Everyone wants to love something or someone. And this desire actually is coming from the source of love, Shimati Radhika. But when this desire, pure desire from Radhika's heart comes through the layers of material existence on material platform, then conditioned soul thinks that he can enjoy this love. But this is il illusion. And sadhus, self-realized souls, are helping us to understand what's really going on, what is reality. And we have here Raghunadas, who is Radhika's Manjari, who is very agitated by this transcendental love. And from these words, only from these words, we can understand actually how much these words is example of oneness in the heart. between Tulsi Manjari and Radhika, but also oneness in the heart between Tulsi Manjari and Rupa Manjari. And this is the beauty and sweetness of this kind of relationship, yeah. which we Sadakas aspirants are trying to attain. And Baba is giving very, very nice formula for our sadhana here, actually. And what is really sadhana? When aspirant performs bhajan in allegiance to the acharyas, a teeny drop of their vast devotional greed may become infused in their heart. So this kind of transcendental greed is not present in conditioned soul. Conditioned soul has another type of greed. And without any endeavor, he has this kind of greed to satisfy his senses, his materialistic desires. When someone is so much absorbed in his bodily consciousness, his greed, materialistic greed, is very spontaneous and completely natural. He doesn't have to force himself. Because this kind of greed is so per strong and pervading all his false existence. But by the association of sadhus, their greed which is coming from their spiritual identity, from the heart of their 
Bhava Deha can be infused in sadakas who are open to receive it. And in that way, their greed and the drop of their greed can be relished in the heart of sadak. So this is the golden formula, actually. How much is important it is sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarve shastra koi. All the shastras are advising the only way to advance in spiritual life and to attain ultimate goal is sadhu sangha. With those who are already on that goal, and this is the value, great, indescribable value of association with sadhus, and especially when we define our bhava, for us, manjari bhava, to take the shelter of this kind of association. Then Guru Parampara starts to be active in the life of sadaka. Because what does it mean, Guru Parampara? That this kind of devotion, specific devotion, according to the desire of sadaka, be infused from Radharani through her maid servants directly in the open heart of sadaka. When we say this, feelings, we say the mood of Manjari Bhava is coming down through this cyclic succession, Guru Parampara, and like an arrow can penetrate in the heart of Sadaka, who is ready to receive it. So this is we say Guru Kripa, but behind the Guru Kripa, it's not only Kripa of one person. It's the Kripa, which is coming from all succession, promising us final success. <laughs> Through succession, we can attain final transcendental success and be in the association of Shimati Radhika and Dasis of the Dasis of the Dasis of the Dasis. So this is the role of Guru Parampara. And Baba is, I'm speaking again, giving here golden formula that we have to be so closed, intimate, with those who already have in their heart Manjari Bhav. And examples are here, Tulsi and Rupa Manjari, but we can also go a little further and say up to the mind Guru. Because without this kind of disciple succession, Guru Parampara, it's not possible to attain this ultimate goal. We need someone who will infuse our hearts with this bhava and with this uh, burning greed. And slowly, but surely, prepare us for our ultimate position, like a dasi of the dasi of the dasi of Shimateratara. If we understand this, 
through our feelings, not only through the mind. Yes, I know that. I read it so many times. I also spoke about it so many times, but I feel it. Then our sadhana will bring success. And everything what we are doing, we will, it will be sadhana. Living in Vraja is the best sadhana. Thinking about Vraja is the best sadhana. Talking about pastimes between Radha and Krishna are the best sadhana. Listening about their pastimes is the best sadhana. Listening, talking, and remembering the lives of listening, talking, and remembering. Uh, Raman is talking to me that uh, you don't hear me. It's okay? Oh, only mature. Okay. So listening, talking, remembering about the lives of those who are already attained that goal is the best sadhana. So this is the different examples of best sadhana, not ordinary sadhana. Ordinary sadhana is when we are trying mechanically to attain something. But we have opportunity to practice the best sadhana. And when someone is practicing this kind of sadhana, he will be immersed in the raga, bhakti, or manjari bhava sadhana. And then there is no difference between life and sadhana. This is how I understand when Gurudev is speaking about 24-7. If something is in the heart, then person naturally, constantly thinks and feels about that. It doesn't matter which kind of circumstances are changing around himself. But even if he has a perfect circumstances, but he doesn't have deeply established in the heart, then there is no so much effect of these perfect circumstances. So Baba is giving golden formula. Again, I'm speaking to that because it's greatly means to me. I'm sorry if I emphasize something which is opposite from your desires, but to relish a drop of devotional greed, we have to be connected, emotionally connected, with those who are already drowning in the ocean of that devotional greed. And verse, this verse is very clearly is giving us opportunity to relish at least a little bit. What does it mean? Manogya hridaye. Girl with a beautiful heart because her heart is temple of the heart. Source of love. And automatically this girl is sadaye. Merciful, because she knows the hearts of everyone. Gya, mano gya. She knows the hearts and minds of everyone, and Krishna also. So I said something. I don't know. Is it Guru Dev here to help his poor disciple? Sunitiji or Janandaji? Go on. Go on. Radhe Radhe Kurta. Jai 
So, <clears throat> when the practicing devotee performs bhajan in allegiance to the acharyas, a tiny drop of their vast devotional greed may become infused in his heart. How sweet are the activities of Sriman Mahaprabhu's associate? Whether they were householders or renunciants, they were all free from attachment to sense gratification. Their auspicious dissension into the material world was meant for distributing tangible devotional experience and detachment from the sense gratification. Rade. Sometimes devotees are asking and asking themselves also, can I advance in my spiritual life if I don't take sannyas or renounced order of life? Is it possible for me to advance if I am grihasta, if I am family? person, family man or lady with lot of children's obligations in material world. This is natural question actually. But we can see here from example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates that practically speaking more than 90% of them have been grihastas. family, persons. But despite of that, it was not blockage for their advancement in spiritual life. He they used this opportunity to even go deeper in his spiritual life because they used this opportunity which brings them so much valuable realizations about materialistic life. And with their spiritual God-given intelligence, they understood what is the meaning of materialistic life if I don't help and be merciful to my own soul, my own jiva. So Goranga's associates, devotees, Gora Bhakta Vrinda, most of them have been Grihastas, and they show Baba is giving tangible devotional experiences. They gave example and distribute, not only through their own lives that they relish, they distribute this tangible devotional experience together with detachment from sense gratification. This is also second important point which is answering one crucial question. How can I be free from attachments, materialistic attachments and desire from sense gratification? No way. Actually, there is no way. Only way is through relishing the tangible devotional experiences of those 
who already have this kind of experiences. Meditating on their experience is a perfection of sadhana, which slowly but surely purify the heart of sadhaka and automatically all materialistic attachments are, be are not so strong, they are becoming weak and weak and weak. So this is the power of pure bhakti. Because the pure bhakti in the soul, in the heart of the person, is much more stronger than any kind of materialistic entanglement. And we, sadhakas, have to have this kind of experience. Following the experience of those who already have this tangible, so nice, so sweet, so lovely, devotional experiences. And we are indescribably, indescribably fortunate that we have opportunity to associate through Mahavani, through, through these golden word, words, with this kind of sublime personalities. And it's not that everyone has can have such kind of fortune. Why? Because mercy is for everyone present here. Isn't it? We have here, I don't know, 70, 80 devotees, but mercy is available for 180 devotees. 200, 1080 devotees. But who is enough fortune to use this opportunity of such kind of mercy? And for that we need Sukriti. We need Sukritis despite of our qualification or disqualification. Sukriti will open the door through which we can start to go slowly on the path. which Acharyas are lightening to us. Why Raghunath is so attached to Rupa, even in Sadakavesh, his love for Rupa is so strong and intense, and he is saying in the, in the beginning of Vilapa Kusumanjali, you enlighten my heart. You, my dear Rupa, enlighten my heart. And be with which kind of light? Vraja light. And because of that light, which is start to spark a little bit in my heart, I have desire. Greed to serve my beloved Radhika. Without this light which you brought in my heart, I'm useless. I cannot have such kind of desire. But because of you, my dear Guru Manjar, some small flame of greediness appear in my heart. And I only pray that I don't destroy this small, weak, very weak flame in my heart.
So for me, this is the second crucial point from the commentary. There is others we can speak, please. But to be allegiance in the emotion, following the emotions, spiritual emotions is the of Acharyas is the first crucial point. And second is that all auspiciousness which is available for sadaka is possible to apply in the life if we follow them. And by following them, Sadaka can taste a drop of this tangible, Baba is speak, tangible devotional service and spontaneously in the same time, a detachment from material world. That. Every mouthful of food causes nourishment, satisfaction, and cessation of hunger. In bodily consciousness, I cannot understand that I am Radhika's maidservant. I just like to be connected with Maya. Shinarata Matakura sings, the senses that dwell in our bodies are so many enemies. Nobody obeys anyone. My ears hear but do not listen. And my heart knows, but does not realize. They cannot become determined and fixed. I am chewing the thorns of sense gratification like a camel who cuts his mouth and tongue by chewing thorns. Instead of eating the mango pits of devotion, like the cuckoo, I am burning to death in the fire of Maya. But still, I will not relish the nectar of devotion. I consider the poison of sense gratification to be happiness, although I should know it to be miserable. Taste the nectar of the Govinda subject and associate with his devotees. No loving devotion to be real. So Narutama Dastakur very clearly is saying and describing the position of conditioned soul. Like a doctor, he is giving diagnosis. And all list of diagnosis, it's not only one diagnosis. There is one sickness, another sickness in your life. This is your diagnosis. But like an expert doctor, he is giving medicine. Because what is the use of diagnosis if we don't know what is the medicine which can cure these sicknesses? Everyone can give diagnosis very voluntarily, and we have to pay so much money for this kind of diagnosis. But who really can give real medicine? 
which can cure our sickness. And Narutam Das Thakur is giving, taste the nectar of Govinda subject and associate with his devotees. No loving devotion to be real. This is only reality. Not what your senses are perceiving, tasting, relishing. This is not reality. It has to be clear, my dear patient. It has to be clear. But you can use this body to take this medicine of Shravana, Kirtana, Smaranam, and so on. You can receive this medicine. You can use this body to cure your disease and prepare your heart for reality, the nectar of reality. Govinda's service is bliss, and a lack of his service is misery. This is the medicine. The serving of your loving Ishtadev, serving Radhika, is something which gives the jiva, soul, the bliss. And absence of relationship with Shimata Radharani gives some misery, great misery. So all these statements are so valuable, indescribably valuable advices for sadhaka. which Sadaka has to accept very, very sincerely. Because only in that way, medicine will work. If we receive medicine pre prescribed by the doctor and said, okay, I will not follow his prescriptions and the way how to I can use each day, then the medicine we will not give cure, which is promised. I will take one spoon instead of three. I will just take one spoon of the syrup from my coughing. And after two days, I will take half spoon or maybe one spoon. But doctor said, no. Each day, three times in a day, you have to take the spoon of the medicine which will help you to cure your coughing. Same thing is with the spiritual instructions. And we need a Shraddha in doctor and in a medicine. And we can see, see I'm sorry that I'm taking this, but we can see that why we are so slow in spiritual life, so many years pass, and I didn't make such a big progress. Although I know my diagnosis, although I know the cure, the medicine, why am I I'm so slow? Sorry. I'm not doing my homework. I'm not taking the medicine in the proper way how my spirit, spiritual doctor 
gave to me. That is it. Taki gana chari pase seva kori abhilase te seva parama sukhadare. I desire service being surrounded by the Sakis. That service contains the greatest bliss. When you love God, the divine remnants of that love will be scattered through the universe. Then you can experience universal love as it is. Then the spiritual world is sweet, the material world is sweet, and sweet Krishna is even more sweet. Sweetness will be pervading inside out. Love will pervade inside out because the sweetness is including the love. It's so lovely. Words Anantadas Babaji is putting here and so many times in different variations our beloved Gurudev was talking about that. First love your soul, then you will love those who already love their souls, Vaishnavas, and then you will be able to love God, Ishtadev, or Adhika. First, Jiva Daya. Enlighten your soul. Allow the others to enlighten your soul, who are already enlightened. How can we love a God? That's the question. How we can love the God without loving our soul? How can we love Radhika if we are not crazy out of love for her maidservants? And our existence in the Manjari form. It will always be like an idea in the air, in the cloud. Sounds good. But Acharyas are telling us here, understand that you are not this body, but soul. Give that soul opportunity to receive the form and then love that form, which Radhika, through her maidservants, gave to you. This kind of love is present in the heart of pure devotees. And because of that kind of love of pure devotees towards Radhika, the drops of their love are spreading all over the world. And it's written somewhere that only this world is existing only because of the drops of love which are sprinkled the all material world from the heart of pure devotees. If there is no pure devotees in this material world, this material world is anyway crazy it will completely be destroyed. 
love in the heart of pure devotees are maintaining this world. And it's not easy to understand, to accept, and to see like this. So this is also sadhana. To try to tune our consciousness in the consciousness of sadhus. And for that, we should remove our strong desire for independence. This love is radical. This love makes Krishna sweet and more sweet. When he is sweet, her love is increasing and he is becoming more sweet. And witnessing this exchange of sweet love, Manjari is also becoming sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter because they are one in the heart with Shimati Radhika. So, Jananda ji, please, Suniti ji, or others, Gurudev, I don't want to force you, but... Honestly, it's so beautiful, but I'm just eager to continue with the Leela, because it starts now, and it's such a wonderful verse, full of nectar, you know, from uh, their services. So that's why I am listening. Yes, you, yeah, you are very eager. But Baba took all page to prepare our consciousness before Lila. So we should understand these instructions and through these instructions try to receive the mercy for proper entering or relishing the Lila. Because this you can see in the book, it's all page. All pages here. It's not like for nothing. And now when the Lila starts, like Sunitiji said, then we can, with prepared heart, with over, at least a little bit, overcome bodily consciousness of love will receive more benefit from listening this Lila. Because the bodily concept of life will become more weaker, not so strong. And we can now, when Rasa Mai, she is reading so nicely, then we can practice the best sadhana, listening Lila. Because we want another best sadhana, smarana of that lila. And smarana is not possible without relishing, proper relishing. Sorry. Dwamini lies to rest on an excellent bed covered with a bluish sheet. This sheet is very dear to her, simply because it is black and reminds her of Mohan. She dreams of Mohana and his sweetness. And that makes her happy inside and outside. Rupa Manjari and Tulasi can both admire her charming beauty and serve her limbs at that time. How wonderful is their love 
पर स्वामिनी रूपा एंड तुलासीज फ्रेंडशिप इज सिमिलर इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड वर दे वर नोन एज रूपा गोस्वामी एंड रागुना दास गोस्वामी Shila Raghunadas introduces himself as follows by writing in the end of his Vishaka Ananda Stotram This garland of verses was strung by someone who subsists simply on serving the dust from shrimat rupa goswami's lotus feet may the devotees who take shelter of him accept the fragrance of this garden it is described in bhakti ratnakaran that after reading shri rupa goswami's play lalita madhava which describes shri radhika's feelings of separation from krishna shri raghuna das almost died of transcendental agony just to save his life shri rupa goswami gave him his dana keli kau mudi to read a one act play which deals with the blissful meeting of radha and krishna this inspired raghuna das to write his jew like one act play named dala dana keli chintamani shri rupa goswami has also written a dedication to raguna das goswami at the conclusion of his dana keli kau mudi o madhava my friend raguna das has given up all other activities and is now living in a cottage on the bank of radha kund very anxious to exclusively serve you and shri radhika you always cast your merciful glance on those who live in vrindavan and you fulfill all their desires so please quickly make the tree of ragunatha's aspirations bear fruit these are some examples of their very intimate friendship Radhika Those two persons are example of intimate friendship spiritual from the spiritual platform but also in material world They nourish the taste of each other this is the french this is sajat sangha if someone is nourishing or we are nourishing his taste according to his taste with our taste then we can say i am blessed to receive the sangha of such person and i'm trying humbly to give my sangha 
according to my inabilities to that person. All other topics are not the sign of Sajatya Sangha. So for that we need intimacy, and intimacy means knowing the heart. of the person which, with whom I want to be intimate. Knowing his desires, knowing his mood, and accepting that this is also my mood. And this is the perfect example. Because Rupa Goswami immediately recognized the suffering of Raghunath from separation. And the best way how he can do it to reveal his suffering is with the more taste in the form of Nila, Lila. And he wrote Dana Kelly, Kaumuti. And there is a lot of fun there. So he nourished his taste, but also he helped him like a real friend, to not be so depressive, but to have a little fun. But not but by his own jokes, but through the funny aspects of Dana Kelly Lila. And this is what revived the heart of Raghunata. Not the jokes of his friend about this and that and that and that, Gramya Kata. No, the funny jokes which are present in the Lila. This can only suit the heart of Raghunata. And what's going on in then in Raghunata's heart? He immediately wrote another piece of jewel, Dana Kelly Chintamani, for his beloved friend, Rupa. This is the exchange of love, exchange of realizations, exchange of mood, and this is the example of Sajatya Sangha. In material platform, but it is possible only because this is strong intimacy and is present in spiritual platform. Raghunata knows who is the Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari, and he knows himself also, like Rati Manjari. Then exchange of feelings is like a flow, strong flow, and this is Sajatya, real Sangha. Raguna didn't say anything which will hurt and give the pain to Rupa. And Rupa didn't write anything which will bring Raguna in completely another mood. Because he is real, truly friend, knowing his heart. And this is the art of friendship. And to meditate on their friendship, spiritual and material is the best sadhana. Can someone add something? Tulasi and Rupa both climb on the bed to serve their Swamini. They are not at all shy. 
their servant mood is mixed with a mood of friendship for Swami. Tulasi calls Swamini Manojna Hridaya, girl with a beautiful heart. Literally, the word Manojna means knowing, inna, and the mind, mana. Mana Janatiti Manojna. Srimati knows what is on Rupa and Tulasi's mind. So she gives them this service. Manojna also means beautiful one. We can just stop here very shortly because it's mentioned one is in the heart between Radhika and her Manjaris. Manjaris exactly knows what is going on in the heart of Radhika, but Radhika exactly knows what is going on in the heart and minds of their Manjaris. This is sublime intimacy. Because the Manjaris are actually one soul with Srimati Radharani. And as much Radhika's maid servants want to fulfill all desires of Srimati Radharani, Radhika has desire, as I can feel, also to fulfill them that desire. She knows that they want to make her happy. And immediately in her heart, in Radhika's heart and mind, appears desire for that seva. Seva is not doing mechanically, automatically, real seva, transcendental seva. Seva is doing according to desire of Srimati Radharani and need. But to receive this desire, Manjari is accepting desire of Radhika. I don't know if I explain. Very well. For example, Radhika knows that Manjaris wants to serve her. So there she is starting to sweat. And Manjaris immediately take the cloth towel and start to do the seva, whipping the Radhika's body from the sweat drops. Radhika is, another example here, Radhika is lying on the bed, but she knows that her manjaris wants to jump in her bed. So she is making the place for them. And Baba is saying there is no any hesitation in that relationship. They are not shy at all. Seva is not according to my will and need and desire. Seva is something which is the result of my desire to fulfill the needs and desire 
of my beloved. And my beloved knows that. And she is giving me the opportunity to serve. So this is the constant exchange of loving relationship, transcendental loving relationship. When Manjari wants to serve Radhika in the middle of the winter by fanning her. So what is the use of fanning someone in the middle of the winter? But Radhika knows the heart of Manjaris. And she starts to perspire. Like in the hot summer. Then Manjari immediately starts to fan. So you can, we can see we cannot perceive the Lila through our three dimensions of times, place, circumstances. Doesn't work. But we should accept and relish through the hearts and words of our Rasik devotees. I see one eye from Gorasundar. And this eye, <laughs> two eyes, is shooting her bhava or his bhava. And I hope that you will help my dear, to your poor brother, which is now in these circumstances, very difficult circumstances. I don't know why it's happening. Dairadi, my dear. I think this is such a beautiful picture that... Uh, Baba is sharing with us from his heart to our hearts. And this uh, Manogya, I remember when Gurdi was sharing on this quality of Shimate Radhika, that she is so special in all her beauties, that she always wants to share the beautiful feelings that she has with her kinkeries. And that is, uh, I feel, when I try to feel this situation, they are together on the bed and they are covering her in the feelings that she has when she is together with him. That is their service. The sheet that they are covering her with is not only a bed sheet, it's her feelings, reminding her also the last time when they were meeting. So the kinkaris, they like this service, and Shimati Radhika likes the kinkaris service. So this is such a beautiful, uh, wonderful uh, atmosphere in that moment that they are so fearless, they are not shy, and they are illuminated by Shimati Radhika's love for Mohan. Because in the next sentence, Baba also mentions that her golden, you know, her, her feelings, when Shimati Radhika has feelings, and she is always swimming in the ocean of Mahabhav, this golden color is so... Uh, pervading the whole atmosphere. So I, when I hear this, I feel that this is a, uh, a white bed with a blue sheet and it's an, a Nayara of golden light. And Rupa and uh, Rati, they are in this golden light of Shimati Radhika's Charan Seva. And we know the beauty of this service 
we have also had so many lucky times when we could serve our Guru Mandri in these moments. Each of us have different, different memories of these intimate, friendly times when we are all together in a jolly mood and we are floating in this uh, feelings of uh, pranay seva. This is the seva that is without inhibitions, without hindrance, without any thoughts of, oh my God, can I do it now? Or should I, or should I not? There's not, the mind is not in between. It's that kind of service that is flowing from one, from one heart to the other heart. And it's full of laughter and smiles and memories. And that's why I uh, love so much this uh, scene. Because... Uh, Yes, we have maybe not our own experiences of this kind of bhajan or lila. But we have our, our brothers and sisters, and we have also been doing service with them. And uh, we have our Guru Manjari, and we have also experience to serve in that circumstances. Maybe making a bed or cleaning a room, and also feeling this aura of of mercy and love and affection, you know, being together in a very sweet moment of uh, uh, service and sweet moment of of humor and, you know, this all what comes together in these moments where we don't have to think with our minds anymore, but just feeling with the heart. And as uh, Srimati Radhika is illuminating even Gora, you know, she is giving Krishna this golden color, this golden love, her Mahabhav. She is so generous. She is giving it to Krishna, and she also is enlightening and filling up the hearts of her kingaris with that feeling. And that's why in that moment they are both so happy, and they are so... Uh, um, Free of any kind of fears, there's no stress, you know, it's a relaxed moment. And all of us, when we have been there in Munge Mandir serving Gurudev, you know, all these times before going to bed, they are so sweet. They are the sweetest. We are sitting there, we have been maybe taking prasad, we have had a, a day full of laughter and full of you know, sharings and sometimes also, uh, you know, difficult situations, but we have been in a day through service. And then in the evening, we, we are like, you know, in this mood of relaxed service. We try to do any kind of menial service, like massaging or pressing the feet to help Gurde also go to sleep smoothly. And then when we hear this sweet snoring, when we hear the uh, sweet sound of his breath, then this is such a relaxing moment. It is so sweet in that moment. It is so, you know, it's like a big family of love. And we all love that sound of uh, relaxed snoring, relaxed breathing, and then feeling, you know, how lucky we are that we can do the service, that we can feel the feelings that we are feeling. And this is how I feel that also Swamini, she's sharing, you know, with her kinkaries, that sweetness that is coming from her heart, from her love to Mohan. But she is sharing it freely. She is not, uh, you know, she makes a no difference because the kinkaries are her heart, are her feelings links also manifestations like rati manjari is the manifestation of her rati of her you know eagerness in passion and rupa manjari is the manifestation of her feelings of the sweetest form of kind of service she always wants to give so that only i want to share at this moment
Manojna, also mean beautiful one. Her endless beauty illuminates the house, the bed, and the hearts of the king Karins. <laughs> Her luster has turned Shyama Sundara golden, making him become Gaura Sundara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. She is the quint essence of Mahabhava personified. All the poetic analogies about Srimati Radhika's beauty, her face defeating the moon in beauty, her eyes defeating the lotus flowers, and her nose defeating the sesame flowers are ultimately futile. Only by her mercy, in the form of ecstatic love, she can be seen and felt in a heart illuminated by Vishuddha Sattva. Pure goodness. Whatever falls into an ocean of nectar becomes nectarian. Similarly, the garments, ornaments, and unguents of Shiradika, who is the personification of Mahabha, are also filled with Mahabha. Yes. It's a very nice description how Radhika's in the form, in the love, she is a love, embodiment of love, has to come in the heart of devotee. Otherwise, it's not possible to have realizations, especially about Raj, and especially about the sweetness which is present in the Raj. Embodiment of sweetness can give mercy that we can feel the sweetness. So, this is the way how we should approach for praying to Srimati Radhika. Please, enter in my heart. Because if you enter in my heart, then I will be able to relish your sweetness, the sweetness of your lover, the sweetness of your maidservants, the sweetness of all Rajavasis, and especially the sweetness of dust of Raja. If you are not penetrate in my heart, just a little bit, how can I relish the sweetness of Vraja Raj? No. So this is why the uh, Acharya is always saying, we need the mercy of Srimati Radharani to understand who is Krishna. We need the mercy of his Hladini Shakti. But devotees who are very close to Srimati Radhika, they actually doesn't like so much to call Radhika Hladini Shakti. She is Radhika. My dear Rai, the Swamini of my heart, Manogya, Sadaye, Indivarakshi, personal, intimate names. And this is for Tattva, that is okay. 
to understand that we need energy of love to come in our heart. But this energy of love is actually person. <laughs> it's not energy. When Guru Dev is coming in our heart, he's coming like a person. It's not like energy is in our heart and he's somewhere else. Because we know him like, like a person and we are trying to be intimate, then he is coming in our heart. There is no difference between energy and the person, but those who are attached for Ishtadev, they like always to listen from the Rasik point of view. Embodiment of love, Radhika enters in my heart. Then I can relish and practice most sublime sadhana. And this is really true. When this is happening in the life of devotee, then this we should sattva. Transcendental understanding who am I, my spiritual identity, clearly seeing my relationship with Radhika and be fixed in this Thai Baba. This is the effect of Radha Shakti. And we call it Vishuddha Sattva because we always have to, we need some proofs from philosophy or something like that. But no, Radhika came in the heart and it brings me to her lotus feet. Even illiterate child or old lady can understand this. I need her in my heart. I need her maid servant in my heart. Because this maid servant doesn't, it's not different from love towards Radhika, cannot separate it. And whatever falls in that ocean of nectar becomes nectar. So I hope that one day, one lifetime, my soul, my existence will come in that nectar, drop of that nectar. And I don't care if I, they call me Vishuddha Sattva or Soda Sattva or this Sattva, Hladini Shakti, that Shakti or that Shakti. I don't care for that. I want to drown in that ocean and never go out. Jai Ho, I, I like Gyanis. this, this, you know, how you differentiate here between the knowledge and the feeling. That is always the subject, right? How to come out of the mind. How to call it is one thing and how to understand the subject is one thing. It's also important, like Guru says, Tattva is the foundation. We have to know, you know, some things, but they are also only the help to go into the Leela, to live in the Leela and feel in the exchanges of love. And I want to add, I just got some memory because uh, this sentence is so sweet. Tulasi and Rupa both climb on the bed to serve their Swamini. So when we hear this, when, you know, climb on the bed, usually you use this expression for the small children who climb on the bed because the bed is somehow very big. And they kind of like have to climb on there. They are just, you know. So I see that in comparison to Swamini, the Dasis, they are small. They are, you know, they are like her babies also. They have to climb on the bed and they are very, you know, happy to climb on Swamini's big bed of Mahabhav. So this I like also, and I remember how good if you always say that sometimes even that she, Shimati, she is hiding her mantras 
under her blanket, you know, she is like keeping them in her bed. She is like to, you know, she likes to be close with them. And the bed is their intimate play, is her intimate play bed also, it can be, but also where they are exchanging intimate service. So I like this uh, um, expression of how, how uh, you know, they climb on her bed and they lovingly and happily and not shy. It's not like any kind of reverence between them. It's the moment where they are now here with the three persons, Swamini, Rupa, and Tulasis, and they are not uh, shy and they can climb on her bed and they are kind of like together there in this uh, intimate moment of her deepest feeling of remembering Shyam or Mohan. And they are serving her by massaging her feet, massaging her hand. And I like this, Gurudev, when you always uh, explain to us that Swamini is so generous that she even keeps them there with her, her in the blanket also. They are not uh, separated in a way. They are not separated because they can feel each other's hearts, feel each other's minds and aspirations for service. So they are completely in this uh, oneness of service that makes this situation so very attractive and relishable and also inspires me to also come very close in my uh, practice. So the sentence is, Mahajanas relish this, and we taste their remnants. So this is our sadhana, to taste their Prashad. And we are praying in Madhukar for that Prashad. They are relishing, and we pray to taste a little of their remnants. So this is the process of following Anugatya in the same mood. Thank you, Sunitaji. Thank you very much. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has written, Radha is anointed with a fragrant ointment of affection towards Krishna. This makes her very fragrant body shine brightly. She takes her first bath in a stream of the nectar of compassion. Her middle bath in the stream of the nectarian youthfulness. And her final bath in the stream of nectarian beauty. Then she puts on a silken blue sari made of her own bashfulness. Her second red garment consists of passionate love for Krishna. And her breasts are covered with the blouse of loving peaks. She is anointed with three ointments the vermilion of beauty, 
the sandalwood pulp of the love of her girlfriend and the comfort of her lustrous smile. Her body is decorated with musk pictures that represent Mohana's brilliant erotic rasa. Her braid is made of hidden anger and opposition and scented powder of her calm yet not calm attributes adorn her limbs. The red color of pan that represents her passionate love brightens her lips and her eyes have eyeliner of the crookedness of love. Her body is adorned with all the ecstatic ornaments such as Sudipta Sattvika Bhavas and the Sanchari Bhavas like Harsha, Joy. She is also adorned with 20 other Bhavas such as Kila Kinchita. Her whole body is hung with flower garlands of attributes. Wow, maybe we can also hear something from our dear Jayananda Maharaj. I'm, I have a question with these three baths. What is the meaning of the three baths that she is taking? Can someone enlighten me? I think I forgot about the three baths. I can read again and somebody may be inspired to share. Well, maybe Goranga Sundra could explain. It's first pass is Karunya Murita. It's mercy of compassion. And then second pass is Karunya Murita. Nectarian usefulness. And then third final one is Ravanyamrita. It's this mentioned nectar of beauty. So if so so Goranga Sundarapa G, if you could explain, I want to hear your nectarian explanation. My dear, I would like also to hear your <laughs> sweet words. Please, Janandaji, be so kind and merciful. <laughs> so, this is, so please explain you first, you know. <laughs> then you, you know, it, then it, it inspires me more. Okay. Actually, 10, 15 years ago, when I read these words, I simply didn't understand anything. And Prabhupada was giving beautiful commentary in Chaitanya Charitamrita about these words, and I didn't understand anything. But 
when I came to Gurudev, it's happened. It happened. That Sunitiji asked him about these three bats. <laughs> <laughs> So I heard his answer, which immediately came in my heart. So it would be very nice if, if Gurudev can enlighten all of us <laughs> with this beautiful Radhika's three buds. You say, right? <laughs> <laughs> Now you're playing ping pong with us. <laughs> <laughs> he is splashing. Mercy drops are coming. <laughs> Back to you, Goranga. <laughs> so I will just say shortly. Actually, these three qualities, like nectar, all these qualities, main qualities, karunya, amrita, nectar of mercifulness, tarunya, amrita, nectar of youthfulness, which is present only in Shimati Radhika in such an unlimited form and capacity. And also this beautiful lavanya form, which is also amrita, lavanya amrita. And because of her beauty, indescribable beauty, lavanya, indescribable beauty, Krishna be is becoming Lavanya also. Krishna is becoming Karunya. And Krishna is becoming Tarunya. And when we hear this, Krishna Das Kaviraj was also said, this bathing in the Karunya Amrita, nectar of compassion, is starting in the morning time. When Radhika is preparing with help of her manjaris to go to meet Krishna in Nandagram. And this is very merciful from Radharani because she knows that he is suffering, waiting for her. And she is running, running, and this running mood is the sign of her karan, karuna amrita. Because he wa she wants to give him mercy in the form of her beautiful darshan. In that way, she is also giving mercy to her beloved maidservants. She is karuna amrita, nectar of mercy. Because maid servants are burning from desire to see her, how she is eager to give mercy to Mohan while she he is desperately and eagerly waiting her. Because when he sees her, even from the distance, his heart starts to suit, to become more calm. So to give someone a peace in the burning cow, in the burning heart and mind and senses is the greatest sign of mercifulness. And because everything in Radhika is Amrita, his personification of Amrita, her mercifulness is also Karunya Amrita. And it's happening very intense early in the morning. Then Krishna Das Kaviraj say, second bath is a mid bath, which is going on in Radha Kund, in the noontime. When Radhika appears so sweet, so fresh, so beautiful, she is bathing in this 
qualities in such intense mood that Krishna cannot resist. She is Amrita in her beauty. Her beauty is Amrita. And she is actually bathing him with her Tarunya Amrita. Different pastimes are present in Radha Kunda, splashing the water, water to each other, singing, dancing, swimming, drowning, etc. But the essence of these known pastimes, essence, is the Radhika with her beauty, Tarunya, is giving Krishna so much nectar that she is bathing him in the nectar of her own qualities, in which he, she is already bathing constantly. So this is, this is the noon pastimes. And Krishna does Karija is going on and said, evening pastimes are very closely connected with Radhika's Lavanya Amrita. This indescribable beauty, because Tarunya is a youngfulness, it's, it's a young age, which is so intense. And Krishna wants to relish her young age. This is bathing for him. And in that age is also present beauty. But in the evening time, this beauty is increasing even more. In the hidden caves of Gorda, in the hidden paths through the forest of Raja, this kind of lavanya is specially reserved for Mohan to make him faint. Because only Radhika Slavanya Amrita, nectar of her beauty, can make him faint. And everything of this we can relish through Kama Gayatri and so on and so on. So I said something short. And please forgive me. <laughs> that I dare to say to speak about this. I learned it from Gurudev. <laughs> Otherwise, I fool. I, I simply didn't understand anything. Even now, I don't understand. Very beautiful. Gurudev, would you like to speak? Or, or, or maybe I should speak and then maybe maybe you can you could add Gurudev. Yeah. Or, or, or you can speak also. <laughs> I, uh, so, so Goranga Sundaraji spoke very beautifully. I just want to little bit add this three bus, my understanding also describing this pastime, Nityarira pastime, Ashtakarya Lira, especially morning pastime. Like a Bhakti Binotakuru describes Jibu Jago, Jibu Jago. So a sun, sun will rise. At that time, Radhika, Mohan does not to separate together, but they have to go on home. So, Goranga Sundara Ji say, also Radhika want to give mercy to the Mohan. I also feel this past time, like uh, she want to give us 
or give compassion to all living entity, including maid servants also. Because this morning pastimes is just sun rising. Every living entity is moving. So this describes we are in the, especially for us, we are in the ignorance. So radical activity, radical cooking, this, this is Adara Murita, her nectar wake us up, also wake up Mohan's feeding. And noon time describes this say uh, tarunya. Tarunya means usefulness. Especially, I also remember pastime, water pastime. Radhika and Moha wear very thin white clothes and then splash each other. Then Mohan and also Radhika could see their usefulness of their beautiful body, also beautiful feeling. And also daytime is very active. So this kind of usefulness represent daytime because daytime naturally we are active. And nighttime, this Rabanya, Rabanya means very beautiful, also very, how to say, graceful. This describes Rasalira. Rasalira, Radhika's dancing, it's so amazing. So Rabanya. Or Radhika's even movement of legs and hand, her body, was so amazing. Krishna's eyes like a uh, one-pointed. And Manjari also one-pointed. Just seeing Radhika's lotus feet and also Radhika's dust, foot dust. So this is so amazingly Ramanya. And also after, after Lasarira, they are all, they are also taking bus in Yamuna. Yamuna is so much nice wind is coming with so much tasty aroma. Moon is also rising up. Nighttime flower also blossom. And birds are also they are singing. All scenery is very much Ravanya. And Rad and Gopi and Mohan, they are tasting that atmosphere. So all Rira represent these three qualities. That's I felt. So maybe Gurudev could explain more, more, more. So thank you very much. It's starting. Art is going on. So all is good. Very nice, beautiful. <laughs>